evening. How's it going today? I'm just back from vacation, so I'm going to be clicking, getting my, uh, my windows up so that I can see any questions coming in. There we go. So, welcome back to Q&Amico. I'm Kara, if you haven't been here before. And uh, live stream that I do uh, each week grew out of a lot of different things, but uh, you know, finding that really people like to see how glazing is done for understanding how to get their own best results. So I had made videos uh, that are on our website, amico.com. Amico uh, stands for American Art Clay Company. And uh, there were still a lot of questions. So they started asking me to do a live stream and that's how this came about. So today, while I'm answering questions, I'm going to be demonstrating a little bit. I'm going to be glazing. I started this a few weeks ago. And this is a cake uh, stand that I have coated with three coats. Sorry. Three coats of Satin Matte 11 uh, white satin matte. So this is bisque and then I coated it with three coats of satin matte 11 white and I'm painting on top of the raw unfired glaze with the semi-moist underglazes which some of you may be familiar with. Let's see if I have one that has the cover on it. So here is what they look like. Here we go. So the watercolor underglazes are what I'm using on here. And they are very saturated color, so a little bit goes a long way. And one of my tricks for using them is to, hi Marie, thank you, it's good to be back. I'm going to separate these so I can see some. Catherine says, welcome back, Evelyn. Good morning, Evelyn. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Rebecca. So one of my favorite ways to use the satin mats is on top of a satin, I'm sorry, use the satin mat glazes with the smugs is to apply the satin mat and then use the smugs on top. And to get the smugs nice and soft so that I can get really good coverage, I have uh, underglaze applicator. This is just water, just plain water. And I put a little bit on each switch over so you can see what I'm doing a little better. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk, and I'm just putting this on the colors that I'm going to use. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the history of our Facebook social media. So our uh, Diana Ferris, who uh, some of you may know, uh, Catherine asks, is the satin mat applied once or three times? This is three coats of the satin mat. So nice, uh, uh, a nice combination. Richard asks, on the Amico website, is there an example of layering with snow and iron yellow? I'm not sure, I actually. I just looked it up, there is. There is? Is it on our layering group? David says, uh, yes, there is. Is it in our layering page, just, or is it? You just Google exactly your question, and it comes up with uh, C10 snow over iron yellow. It looks like a um, not one of our test tiles. Somebody else oh, okay. submitted it. Um, Richard, David says that if you Google snow over iron yellow, you will get a result. Uh, it does not appear to be on our page, but uh, 
You certainly throw can. Throw in Amico on that. Yeah, put Amico on there, snow over iron yellow, and you should, you should get a result. So um, three coats of satin matte white. Uh, Jason, this is not clear. Jason is asking, why put the smug on top of the clear and not under? And this is actually not the clear. This is the white, so it's more opaque. And um, I like doing it on top because I get really strong color. And uh, I know exactly what it's going to look like. So uh, I started doing it this way, and I just really stuck with it because I like it. Uh, I've done it both ways. I've done smugs with clear over. It works really well. So if you prefer using a clear glaze over your under glazes, it works great for that. And especially because then you can bisque the smugs on and then add more color without having to worry about lifting the color that's already on there. Um, but I really like this technique of putting it on top. So, uh, I think it was about nine years ago, uh, maybe maybe closer to 10, uh, Diana Ferris, who teaches a lot of our workshops on Amico glazing and uh, is also uh, our international salesperson at this point, representative for our international uh, uh, distributors, uh, she originally created the Amico Cone 56 uh, exchange, what is now the Amico Cone 56 exchange. And it was originally uh, the Potter's Choice exchange. So it was originally for people to discuss the Potter's Choice Cone 56 glazes. We quickly found that there was a lot of interest in things beyond that. And as we came out with more Cone 56 lines like the celadons. Um, instead of making separate groups for everything, we just made it all the all the Amico Cone 56 uh, glazes. So it covers celadons, satin mats, chinos, celebrations, uh, BHF glazes, lots of different glazes. I've got some little fish on here. I'm painting octopi on this. Uh, uh, Virginia asks for a YouTube video on using kiln cement, uh, repairing kiln bricks. I think there are some, but I'm not sure. If, I, I know we don't have one specifically for Amico cement. Uh, it should work the same as any kind of kiln cement. Uh, and Robin asks, is there a process that preserves the soft appearance of the underglaze when it's fired to cone six? And I'm not really sure what you mean by the soft appearance, but this is about as close as I get, is putting the underglaze on top of the satin mats. And it does look very soft and uh, satiny. It's not shiny. Um, see another question. Bonnie asks, which distributors sell the individual smug colors uh, to go in the palette tray? You're getting low. Bonnie, we discontinued selling the individual uh, uh, pans. And so uh, there are some distributors who still have some, but I, I don't know which ones. You would just have to go online and I take a look. I can shoot her a Brickyard's phone number. OK. Brickyard still has some? Probably still have some. OK. Um, There are distributors out there that do. Uh, so, but it'll it's going to get harder to find. Uh, Jason asks, any updates on when the PC17 Honey Flux combos are coming back to the Amico layering page? Uh, I didn't know that they went anywhere. Did did they go someplace? So. Um, I, I don't know. I will have to look into that. I didn't think that we had them on there to begin with, actually. And we do have some interns who are working on photographing our uh, layering combos. So you should be seeing more uh, layering images show up in the next few months. But I don't have any 
like exact times or uh, as far as I know we haven't taken any down um, yeah I'm sorry Bonnie that was uh, uh, I think that it was getting too difficult to ship out individual pans I don't know so uh, going back to the history of our Facebook group um, Diana found it was it was becoming a popular group very very quickly and asked our marketing department to take it over and for a while it was being administered by uh, our then head of marketing Stephen Creech and uh, then by Danny Pugel, who was uh, also creating video content. And uh, she and I worked closely together on a lot of videos and creating physical content for advertisements. And uh, when she left the company to move out of state, uh, they asked me to take it over and that was about six years ago now the group has grown a lot and we are a bit different from other uh, ceramic groups I mean we are a sponsored group the group is sponsored and administered by American Clay um, But unlike a lot of other uh, uh, sponsored Facebook groups, we encourage a lot of other content. So we have all kinds of stuff going on in our group. And uh, we try to be an active resource for our customers in many different ways. So, um, this comes up because while I was gone, there was a question about uh, posting work that's by other artists. So sometimes uh, you may see somebody's work and you think, that is really gorgeous. I wonder how they do that. And uh, some people in the group were had posted photos asking how artwork was done or how to get certain results that they had seen. Um, and, and that's okay. We ask that you give artists the, uh, you name the artist and give them the credit for making it. You can say something like, I didn't make this, but I think it's really great. Anybody have any ideas about how it's made? It was made by so-and-so. And we have had some artists who ask that if their work was shown and shared in the group without their permission, they ask that it be taken down. But that has been fairly rare. And I have, of course, taken that down when it has, has occurred. So I have a little school of fish coming through the, coming through the seagrass. Uh, Cookie said, so the clays that are discontinued will stay gone, like 480 speckled is your favorite. I'm sorry, I don't know if we have plans to uh, release new versions of some of the, the discontinued clays. It's possible, but I don't know. I am not part of the team that makes those decisions. Uh, if there are plans, I do not know of them at this time. Uh, Robin says, yes, I like that satin look. I love how they appear when they're, when the underglazes are naked and unfired. I would like to achieve that in the final firing. Robin, this is about the, the, the closest I have come to 
having underglazes look like they do when they're raw, but it does not, it doesn't work as well with like velvets and uh, the LUGs simply because those have more clay in them and uh, because they're closer, they're an underglaze where these have a higher proportion of stain. So the, um, the underglazes can sometimes, especially the greens and the blues, can bubble and come out really uh, rough if you put them over a glaze. Um, let's see, Gina asks, hi Kara, nice to see you after vacation. It's great to be back. Uh, can underglaze paint on top of satin matte when painting is done? Do you need to glaze HF clear over? And no, I'm not going to put a clear over this. It, the white will uh, fuse, it'll melt just enough where the underglaze will get into the surface and stay there. So I don't have to put a I don't have to put a clear on top at all. So my little my little uh, gray fishies. I'm thinking. Hmm. Didn't bring a tool with me. Well, I think I can use this. Yeah, so maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but maybe she doesn't realize that you put a uh, set. Oh, white down first. Gina, if you're just tuning in, this is three coats of the white SM11 satin matte on top of the bisque, and then I'm putting the underglaze uh, on the the smug on top of that. And I'm going to kind of it's this is almost like a little scraffito sort of thing I'm doing here, where I'm going to use my pencil to draw around the fish to kind of clean up that line. You can also use an X-Acto knife or, or a needle tool. So I'm doing this a little oddly, I know. It, this is, is underglaze, the smugs, semi-moist underglaze, on top of the satin matte white. So I don't need to put a clear on top. The satin mat will fuse. And Maggie asks, do these underglazes retain their color in cone 10 reduction? I haven't tested them in cone 10 reduction. Some of the colors I know will hold up and some of the colors I know will not. Uh, the red and the uh, yellow will hold up. I think that the blues will too, but I'm pr like the, the electric blue over here. However, uh, and this, this is dark blue, even though it looks purple. Uh, and that one, I think will hold up to cone 10 reduction as well. And the black will, but I don't know about the other colors. Some of them will probably fade. You would have to test them. So I, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to use a little bit of blue on some of these. Maybe not. I want to use blue, but then I, I'm afraid that they'll like look like everything else. Oh, yellow. There we go. Uh, Jason says, I'm pretty sure there's a bug in the layering database on the website. I'll PM you with more details. I appreciate that. I am worried if there's stuff that is disappearing. Uh, so the the group when I started uh, as the admin for the uh, Amico Cone Five Six Glaze Forum, I think that we had about fifteen thousand members which is nice, it's a good size, but I think that we are up now to 93,000. So it has become quite a large group. Hi, Sarah. Uh, Maggie, uh, yes, these smugs can be mixed just like watercolor paint. So sometimes I do that and, uh, you know, mix a color 
But yes, you can use them exactly the way that you would use any watercolor. Hi, Janet. Are you just getting here now? Janet says, better late than never. So as I was saying about the group and the other groups that I admin for Amico, uh, primarily my purpose in these groups is to be a resource for learning about glaze in general and Amico glazes specifically. So I try to treat it as a bit of a class. Here, I'm going to mix a little bit here, make this blue a little darker. It hasn't had time to sit yet. Um, So just as when I was teaching, I encouraged students to ask questions and uh, and I tried to be a resource uh, just the same way as that. I try to do that here in, in the group as well as in these videos. So. I encourage questioning as well as sharing. I'm always really excited to see uh, how you all use the materials, the clay, the glaze. It's always an exciting thing. So like I was saying, I like to let the water sit on the smugs for a little while. It helps soften them up and then it's easier to uh, paint with them. If you try to do it when they're still, you know, just put water on immediately and get, a, get, get them to lift, it's a little more difficult. And I know we've had a lot of spam in the group lately. We're working on that. I haven't really found a good solution. And Facebook is not being incredibly helpful. But we will manage. Now, some of you may have seen the video that was posted last week since I had told you we'd have a guest host um, and Red really tried their best but you know it's hard when you're a dog to work the controls on the computer so it didn't it didn't go as well as we'd hoped but Red did give it their best Uh, Der Girl says, sometimes the yellows are too faint. I have found that mixing in just a tiny amount of the white smug with, in with it becomes a little more opaque. That's a great idea. Uh, the, the yellows can be very, very delicate. And if you're having difficulty making them show up, then yes, using a little bit of, uh, a little bit of white mixed in is a great idea. The white smug is very, very opaque, and I have even used it over darker colors, and it shows up quite well.
He was so cute. I just missed the spam talk. I had to change Wi-Fi. Uh, it really wasn't a whole lot of spam talk. Just I'm still working on it. Yes, Red is adorable, and you would not believe how soft he is, too. And he's such a sweetheart. We have a very dog-friendly workplace. Uh, so a lot of employees in the office area do from time to time with uh, special permission and insurance uh, bring their dogs to work and uh, it does make for a very uh, sweet kind of environment and uh, so on any given day, if you visit our offices, uh, you, may, you may meet two or three or even more dogs like Red. Uh, so yes, we were really glad that, that Red was able to make an appearance. It was really adorable. I got a big kick out of that when I saw it. Yeah, there's so many dogs here and it's always great. They're always so sweet. It is a little strange sometimes to be in an office and then hear a dog bark. It's pretty rare. We don't have particularly barky dogs. They, they generally are pretty quiet. So in, in doing the, the uh, smugs, just like if you're watercoloring, I work from light to dark. And uh, you cannot really put light colors on top of dark colors. They'll kind of get sort of murky because the colors are not opaque. But I do get great results with this. So. And I may spend hours on one of these just because I, I enjoy it and I love the results. They're just so, so colorful and so much fun. And so this is kind of fun to do while I watch for your questions and listen to you. Let me see, other things that I can tell you about the Amico group. So we used to do a Testile Tuesday email and, uh, and share that on Facebook as well. Uh, that kind of dropped off um, during uh, COVID and the live stream has kind of picked up instead. So I, my first live stream was because uh, we were having a lot of questions about how to get best results with flambe and copper red. And I had done a little testing with it. So, uh, you know, I had tried explaining, but explaining how thick that glaze needs to be wasn't, uh, wasn't helping much. Cookie says, yes, it's easy to lose hours in detail illustration work. Yes, it is especially put on a good podcast or some really soothing music and just completely lose track of time. Uh, so the first live stream was simply my smartphone together with, um, uh, you know, just here in our, in our marketing uh, office. And uh, because it was during COVID lockdown times, there weren't a lot of people around, so that worked okay. And I just uh, set, up my, set up my phone and started filming as I glazed and talked about how to glaze. Uh, and it kind of grew from there. And I learned a lot about doing these streams, so now you can see me you know for a long time people were asking to see my face while i talked because you could you could hear me 
isn't quite the same. And as for how I ended up doing this, both the admin for the Facebook and for doing the live stream, a big part, like the major part of my job here at Amico is creating the layering tiles and uh, testing new products and uh, generally using a lot of glaze. So I learned how to, how to get the best results with our Amico glazes. Uh, because I was doing so much stuff behind the scenes. And uh, so it seemed like a natural progression for me to uh, talk on online in videos and uh, on Facebook, as well as answering some of those questions that come up um, on our Instagram or our YouTube, uh, it seemed like a natural progression for me to be the one to answer those questions because behind the scenes, I was sometimes that person. But I don't know all the answers, and so I have a wonderful team here who I learn from. We have a great lab. We have a phenomenal tech support team. If you've ever had need to call in to them, they are so, so very helpful. And uh, uh, so we talk a lot between teams to try to get the best, uh, best knowledge together that we can. Allison is asking, hey, when are, is there any update on when the new glazes will be added to the layering page? Uh, so we do have, we are in the process of photographing all those layering cups. David, uh, who helps me here with the live stream, pardon me, and also works in Brickyard and makes content with me for marketing. Uh, David and I worked on creating all those layering cups and layering samples, and we do have people currently working on photographing them. So I'm hoping that we should have them in a few months, but I cannot give any definite date on when we'll see layering for those. I have to admit that since uh, in the past three years we have, have built up quite a backlog of layering um, because photographing and color correcting and doing all the, the cutting out and uploading, transferring those files and uploading them to our website is actually quite a process. We really strive to make sure that those images are as accurate, color accurate as possible. Sometimes I've had, I've had people who suggested that maybe we made lots and lots of samples, but I can tell you we only make one of each unless something happens and like it gets broken or uh, we've had a couple times where they fall over and we can't really photograph them when they have a piece of brick stuck to the front. But uh, we only make one sample, but we do our utmost to make sure that that sample is photographed accurately and uh, and uploaded to our website so it is taking a while now I think you know I'm, I'm mostly working on water today but I really like those colors that I'm putting in there for the water kind of exciting so I'm gonna come back with this in two weeks and see how far I can get. Uh, maybe maybe finish this up in another couple of sessions. But if you have more questions about uh, 
our Facebook groups or about uh, other, other social media accounts that we run or our purpose in doing this, you know, just drop me a line. You can actually just comment in the in wherever you're watching this, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, uh, and I will I will catch up with you later. But for today, I think I'm gonna let this be done for today, and I'll come back to it later. Jason's asking, what other Amico groups are there that you are admin over? And there is the Low Fire, Amico Low Fire Glaze Forum, uh, which is not as active, but we do, we do get some posts. And uh, there is also an education group for K through 12 teachers that uh, uh, is mostly administered by uh, one of our affiliate artists, but I do keep an eye on it just to make sure things aren't going too far astray. So uh, those are the three groups, and then I also keep track of our, uh, uh, our business account and our YouTube. We also have Instagram and TikTok, and if you're on TikTok, check out our Amico Brent TikTok. Uh, David is our, is our star of our TikTok, I have to say. His TikToks are hysterical. You really need to check them out. Um, but you can also see some of them on our Instagram. And uh, Cookie had a question that everyone else might want to hear. Does this Please affect, yes. Uh, Cookie asks, does this affect work over snow as a base? And yes, it does. Although snow, depending on how you're firing it, snow can move a little bit. And so sometimes the underglazes will move and they won't stay exactly where you put them. But snow is pretty stiff, so I've done this with snow, and it didn't move. It, it didn't move much. But if you're firing to cone six or hotter, it it might shift a little. You should try it out though. Uh, I have done it. Looks good. I like the satin mat because I like that satiny surface, and I also know that it's not going to move at all. So that's that's why I choose to to do the uh, the snow. I'm sorry, the satin matte white instead of snow. But uh, uh, Rebecca says that she's watching on YouTube today. That's also a great place. And I do answer questions on YouTube that come in, although not as, as quickly. So for today, I'm going to let you all go. Thank you for joining me on my glazing adventures. And I will see you next week. Uh, I'll have more glazing with Amico and a little bit more directed video and uh, we will uh, be back to our usual Tuesday every Tuesday at 1130 video schedule so I'll see you later thanks for joining me